Hello. Could you please introduce yourself? Tell us about your project. Okay. Yeah, so my name is Ramsey. I'm one of the founders of Bagpipes. Um, and uh, basically, the mission of the Bagpipes is to make interacting and building on blockchains simple and accessible for everyone, basically. So in order to enable that mission, we've created a product. This, this is Bagpipes. This is a no-code drag-and-drop interface. Um, and so you can do a bunch of stuff already. Like, you know, you can drag and drop chain nodes and action nodes to create workflows. And these workflows uh, give you a bit more uh, flexibility to create, um, to create um, uh, workflows that are more custom to you. So, for example, right now, uh, if you go to your standard apps and dApps, you know, whether it's a wallet or a parachain native dApp, um, they can do stuff that's specific to their own chain. But we foresee that because everything's becoming, you know, more interoperable and you have XCM and, and beyond, um, there'll be a higher abstraction layer that allows you to create not just dApps that are native to a specific chain or parachain, but dApps that cherry pick from different chains um, to create cross-chain dApps. And so you can use this canvas and this... Uh, builder to create these cross-chain dApps, basically. And um, here is one example. You can send, so this example is we want to send dots to, we want to basically convert our dot to Glimmer on Moonbeam. So in order to do that, uh, we send the dot to Hydra DX and we swap, um, you know, we, we drop two uh, chain nodes here, Hydra DX here and Hydra DX there. Then we drop an action node here to do a swap. And uh, this shows the like life. This fetches the life price here. Yeah, so this is like you know one dot is sixteen uh, uh, glimmer, and then uh, we can then send. We can then send that uh, whatever is converted. Whoops! You're yeah, welcome to the world of bugs. It's still experimental. But then um, then you can send. Um, we want to send whatever is converted to Hydra DX, so sorry, to Moonbeam. So then we dropped an action node there, and now we want to drop a chain node here. Okay, and then we select Moonbeam, and uh, there is the complete, there is a complete workflow. So going from Polkadot to Moonbeam, going through Hydra DX, swapping stuff, swapping dot to Glimmer. Um, so what you have here is you have one platform that does three signings, three signs, three extrinsics, all at one time. So we, when we click play, you'll be able to sign all of those extrinsics at the same time. Uh, and then when you click broadcast, it will then go through and in a in in uh, in a synchronously and hop through and execute those transactions one by one. So. That's really cool because it's uh, it's great for productivity because someone can now um, instead of having to go from different apps, you know, having to go from a wallet and then go to a parachain native app, they can just use bagpipes to to uh, build their custom workflow and one signing in one platform instead of three signings and and two platforms. Let's say, yeah, that, that's all right. That's it's good. good. Uh, what's about uh, the current state of business? Are you planning um, upcoming integrations? Some in part chains? Yes, yeah, so, okay. In terms of integrations, um, so in January we got a Polkadot grant. So we're doing a lot on, we're going through the deliverables of that. So we're integrating Polkadot and the palettes and you know the ability to query Polkadot palettes and things related to Polkadot stuff. We're also going to parachains to make integration. So we're going to Moonbeam to integrate, you know, um, EVM stuff and, you know, like Stellar Swap and like Beam Swap. We've done Hydra DX, so you can, you know, use the Omni pool on bagpipes. And uh, we're going to Oak, which we think is really cool. And it's gonna, soon going to be on Polkadot uh, ecosystem. It's currently in Kusama. But it's got all these like really cool on-chain scheduling and automation palettes that we're going to add into here. So you'll be able to build your workflows using, you'll be able to use those palettes in your workflows. Um, and in terms of business, like 
Um, right now, we are focusing on building the product and then we have tentatively created a sort of business model that we are going to implement, which is a freemium model, which enables users to use the product for free. But then if they want to have extra features, like have unlimited scenarios. So right now you have like, the, you can go to the lab and you have multiple scenarios that you can go to. So like, here's another scenario, which is like a witty tweet bot that I was just showing someone before. And, uh, you know, here is the thing we were just using here is, sorry, excuse me. Here is, uh, here is the thing we were on before. So like there are scenarios, these are scenarios. So, you know, the freemium model, maybe you can have one or 10 scenarios. We haven't come up with that yet. So we're still really early. We're just focusing on building a really good product, let people use it for free. And then once we have something that is, um, not, doesn't have like, you know, that's nice to use. Um, we'll then, um, offer it, you know, offer like a, uh, basically get people to pay for it essentially, but, and offer them infrastructure services so that they can persist these apps. So like, this is one workflow. Let's say someone wants to, perhaps the workflow I just showed you is not suitable for persisting, but let me show you another workflow that is. So this is a, um, this, excuse me, um, this, this is a workflow because it has a webhook that triggers. It can be turned into an app because you can persist it. And so when you persist it, it's just running in the background. It's running on our server in the background, or it can be running on your server because you can self-host bagpipes. But let's say you want to run it on our server. You know, we're going to offer that as an infrastructure service. So this, for example, triggers something. You know, something will trigger. Then an, a then an API call will be made to like get some proposal information maybe from a, for a referendum. Then you can tell ChatGPT to read the proposal and then send a tweet, you know, something like that. That's a bot, you know. A user might want to then persist this bot so it's always running and it might be triggered based on a certain event that's, um, that gets the get RPC node. So uh, it schedules a RPC call to be made like, you know, every day uh, and then it will, then it will filter if it's, if it's, if it's if, if there's like a critical point in a, in a, in a referendum, uh, you can, you can filter that. So if it's not critical, you know, you forget it won't, it will stop there. But if it is, uh, use, if it is important, then it can carry on and make a tweet for you. So, um, yeah, yeah. long story short, um, we're just focusing on product market fit right now making sure that, you know, we're not charging for anything right now. So, but the business part of things will come. And I think, as I mentioned, the freemium model probably is going to be something that we, that we, uh, could go down here. Uh, and how long, Sorry, that's been long. So, yeah. uh, how long have you been in the ecosystem? I love me personally. I've been in the ecosystem since January, 2021. Um, I started learning substrate there. Um, I was, hanging around in the Edgeware ecosystem. They had a very active uh, governance and uh, treasury before, you know, much before OpenGov. I think they were funding like $5 million of grants. It was a really great place to experience what it's like to be in a decentralized, uh, in, in a community that has these like decentralized mechan governance mechanisms. So I hung around there and then I um, got a grant to build a power chain for Edgeware called Bajar Sama. That was like an interesting experiment. Then I built a few pallets, uh, and then I met Philip, also in Edgeware. Um, but about six months ago, we um, started um, brainstorming uh, like ideas, and we came up with uh, a drag and drop builder for XEM. We've now dropped the word XEM, and we made it. We know we want to enable XEM, but we want to make it a bit more like user friendly in terms of the uh, naming conventions. But yes, this is how we came up with Bagpipes. So Bagpipes have been alive for. I say I said six months, but actually it's long more than six months now as we're in March. So yeah, maybe eight months it's been it's been around, and uh, yeah, we've been building for the past eight months. Uh, in, 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 yes, and, in this ecosystem. And the last question: uh, What is the power of Web three? Sorry, say that again. What is the power of Web three? What is the power of Web three? Oh, that's a good. That's a very cool, open question. Well, Web yes, Web three. Like, um, 
from a simple point of view, you know, and it, it gives you this consensus tools. So like you can you can tap into like databases that have these consensus mechanisms and it's um, uh, a first principles approach to design these new systems that we're all very much excited about and interested in. And the first example, you know, these like, like Polkadot, for example, is being this very awesome decentralized company that has this treasury that enables anyone in the world. You know, you don't need a passport, you don't need a bank account, you just need a good reputation to go uh, and, and, some, and some skills to go and, and work on a project, add value to the community, get funded and build these awesome new, awesome new tools. So that's what Web3 enables. Uh, and obviously it can enable m much more awesome stuff um, in the future. And um, that's why we bought Bagpipes, because we want it to, we want users, we want like developers and sort of no-code developers from Web2 to be able to have a very easy interface to build the new tools for Web3. So yeah, so I hopefully that's like, a, yeah, give some insight into how Web3 could be a value, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah, good. Awesome, nice one, thanks.